final driving with six and seven for 48 yards and, and completed over 85 percent of his passes what did you see from him tonight um I mean, I think what you just said there, I think it was almost the story of kind of our whole team. I think there was times that we were all off at times, um, you know, just uh, what was cool. I thought everyone who had a few plays that stuck out that, you know, either ended a drive or was why you didn't get a first down. The same thing on defense, even on special teams. Um, but everyone who did do that stuff made a huge play at the end and all three phases to get us back into it. And um, Brock, yeah, he made some big plays in this game, missed a couple, um, but leading us down on that last drive and getting the win. That's all you can ask for. The, the, the initial road to the Super Bowl. Obviously, you got one down, but you got some more to go. What will you focus on the most coming up this week in preparation, taking you know that before? Um, I mean, we'll sit there and watch tomorrow, find out how we're going to play. Um, we'll review this game on Monday. Uh, coaches will work on for two days a game plan, and um, I mean, it's not just one area. We just want to play our best football. Um, you know, do everything we can to play our best. So. We feel we can win every game when we do that. We don't feel like we did that today, um, but we still found a way to win, which I'm um, very proud of the guys in there. I thought that was as big of a mental challenge and just a character game as any game I've been a part of. I mean, when things aren't going how you want on offense, defense, special teams, um, you know, the rain, guys slipping a lot, you know, losing Debo early, um, having to change some things with that, and um, just some of the mistakes we made to overcome. Like, it was a gut check for everybody, and uh, couldn't be more proud of the people in there and uh, just how they persevered. Any the initial impression on uh, the severity of Debo's? Um, I don't know yet. I mean, it's um, he tried to come back, couldn't do it. Uh, I know he did something similar versus Cleveland, so. Um, We'll, we'll see tomorrow. Was there something specific that Green Bay was doing that was throwing off your offense a little bit? And did you adjust it on that last series that you did anything different there? No, no. Um, I mean, they were very similar to what they were on tape, which is, is a real good defense. I think they got a lot of good players. And, um, you know, we were, you didn't realize till we got, you know, studying these last, you know, two weeks that how good of a defense they are. I know their numbers weren't there throughout the whole year, but um, we knew they were going to be a challenge going into this game. And um, they made some plays, credit to them. And I thought we missed a few too that could have kind of helped us stay on the field a little bit longer. You know, even starting out on the, the opening drive, you know, we had a real good look. We ended up getting a false start that kind of took that away. And um, the next play, we didn't have the same look. And uh, fortunately, they dropped that pick. Um, but the whole day was just a little off, but guys stuck with it. And I mean, even like the third and, or the second and six right there at the end, getting that drop leads us to third and six. And then BA made a hell of a play to keep us on the field. So um, everybody had their part um, in both sides of the ball. Uh, you, looking back, do you question your strategy to be less aggressive at the end of the first half and go for the two for one? Um, I mean, I like that they didn't score. Um, I like that we won at the end of the day. Um, so, you know, I, we did go, we did try to score. Uh, we had a chance there right after, um, on second down, that we had a chance for BA over the middle would have been a big play that got, in, got us inside the 10 with um, two shots to take at the end zone. Um, we didn't have the time to get it over the mic and we ended up checking it down and then we didn't get it, but uh, that's how it works out. I thought we, we make sure they don't get another chance, but it's not like we were just playing for a field goal. Uh, we, we called for a big play, it just, they played pretty deep. How much did the rain impact your offense? Uh, I thought, I mean, the rain is always a factor, but it was for both sides, I think. I think the biggest thing was the turf, the field with the rain. I mean, there was a, uh, I, I saw it, I thought it affected defense a little bit more just watching, um, you know, I saw Dre slip a couple times on, I know, one big third down. I saw Mooney slip on a big third down, I think. I, I think it was Gip once. I know Juwan slipped on a big third down for us. Um, the one that just went off his hands, he slipped, I think from what I saw out there right before that, so we couldn't really jump. So I think that the, wa the, the wetness with the new turf. How stressful is it to be in that position, the number one seed? Packers are basically controlling the game, and it all comes down to one drive to win it. Um, same as it always is, whether, not because we're the one seed, just because you're in the playoffs. I mean, we've been in the playoffs a number of times, and you know what happens if you lose, and we feel we got a really good team. And we talked a lot about it last night, we know what's on the line. Anytime you play, a game that's do or die. Um, it's everyone knows what that's about, especially our guys. They've been through that a number of times in the last few years, and uh, we all know what that feels like when you don't get it done. And that's on your mind throughout the week. That's always on your mind during the game. But that's why I'm so proud of the guys. When it's not going right, and you know how big of a deal that is, you still got to perform. And the guys.
did big time. I mean, they got the plays that we needed to win, the play that Dre made there at the end to get the pick. I still have mixed emotions. I can't believe he didn't get down right away. Um, <laughs> but that was kind of like the whole day. I mean, uh, all the guys I would get really upset with are also the guys I had a lot of love for at the end, too, because they were the ones that pulled it off to get us a W. Did you get any sense at all that the layoff affected you guys, the time off? Um, I mean, I don't know. It's, could have been that, could have been the rain, could be good defense, could be, but I mean, those are just stuff that you got to talk about. I thought we handled that as good as we could. I mean, we, we had a hard practice that week. We played guys as much as we could. I know we sat Brock, but um, and there's not much I would have done differently. Uh, Dre Green last seems to have a unique ability to make those big plays in those big situations. What can you say about the type of person that he is and what leads him to be able to do that? Uh, Dre, I mean, just being able to play today. He's been battling here for these two weeks, um, trying to get back and get healthy for the game. And um, I mean, he inspires the heck out of all of us, the way he runs, the way he hits. Um, for him to make those plays, catching the ball when they send both to him, he's really trying. I mean, we'll put him on offense if he really wants to run with the ball that bad. But uh, he. He could definitely get down a lot sooner. Oh yeah, I was. You mentioned having to adjust when Debo went out early. How does that change things for you on the offense? Um, it it changes a lot of stuff. I mean, especially when you, when you have wristbands and things like that, and um, you know, you just got to switch some guys around, which is always a challenge for those guys. It happened during the Cleveland game, and we didn't handle it that well. Uh, I thought we handled it better today than we did then, but it is a huge challenge. I mean, it's. Um, I mean, Debo's obviously one of our better players, but he also is a unique guy that goes to some certain spots. So you gotta, you gotta be adjusting that all game. I all back with about six something left. Did you call it as if it was the last drive? Was that in your mind the whole time? It was. I mean, at the beginning, it's not. I mean, you don't, you don't want to. You, you want to make it normal football. It always is normal football to me until you're out of timeouts and you realize the other team can kneel it. So. Um, I mean, at first, we started moving it. Once it got to about three and a half, you realize it's probably going to be the last drive. But you also, I mean, to where we're going to use four downs if we get in that situation. But you also know when you have three timeouts that it doesn't have to be that way. I mean, you can get you can give it back to them with one minute if you use your three timeouts right and still have a chance. So, But um, towards the end, you, you knew it was the deal when we were inside the 10, and I think there was a minute three left. And, you know, I, I think we scored it at a minute, minute seven. And that's the hard thing where you're, you don't want to score too fast, but you sure as hell want to score. Um, so you can't be too picky with that. What about the one for Jawan Jennings? Um, great question. <laughs> that, those are some of the challenges when something goes down and you call a wristband number and um, and forgot to tell him not to say Hezzy or not to read Hezzy. But sometimes we just Ron Burgundy our wristbands and. And then you look up, and Juwan's in the backfield, and couldn't kind of stop it. Uh, what happened? You think Why Logan Ryan over Jair Brown? Um, we just when we knew that um, we kind of decided that when you know Jair had missed about four weeks, and you know, I think it was two games, but he had been out four weeks, and he's been awesome in practice. I love Jair; it has nothing to do with him.